Hi, this is Pedia Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com and this is tutorial number 59. Now when we left off in our last tutorial, we had a small error. And we noticed that when we started the game up and we had our mobs randomly generate, when we try to target them now, we get this out of range uh, exception. Now that is because our targeting script, if we look at it, uh, I'll just open up model development. When we hit the tab key, it will automatically go into targeting mobs. Now all these mobs that it has in its array, it grabs when it first starts up. Now the problem is that we've switched our spawning script over to a finite state machine, so it may not have the mobs on the screen automatically. Now we're gonna to have to adjust this sooner or later anyway, so we might as well do it now. So what we wanna do is when we hit the tab key and it calls target enemy, we're just going to want to check to see if we actually have any mobs targeted or in our array to be targeted. So we'll just do targets.count and we'll say if it equals zero, then we'll want to collect uh, all the mobs into our list. So at all enemies is what we call that function. So now it's going to grab all the enemies and later on we'll have to uh, expand on this and we only want to grab the mobs that are within range of us, whatever we define that range as being. But we'll get to that a little bit later on. So let's hit clear. We'll start it up. I've got my three mobs and now I can target through them. Now the name appears to have, well, shrunk. <laughs> so we're probably going to want to adjust that. Uh, we've done it in a previous video. You should know how to do that already. I'll just do mine a little bit later on. I think it's because I switched fonts again. But anyway, we no longer get that error. Uh, one quick optimization I'm going to do while I'm here is I'm going to check to see if I actually have any targets. So targets dot count and if it's greater than zero, then I'll perform the selecting of a mob. So I'll just cut all that out. Because there's no point in going through all this code if we actually don't have any mobs in our array. And let's just start that up and tap through. Great. Now the purpose of this tutorial is I wanted to start building my little starter town. So I already know where I wanted it. It's basically in the center of a uh, town or in the center of my map here. Now I'm going to use some of the models that I have lying around. Now these are paid models so I can't distribute them to other people but if other others out there watching the tutorial want to create some free houses and whatnot or know of a good resource for free houses for educational use, uh, feel free just to send me a PM and I can add them to a list. So let me go import those models that I have. Alright, so I've imported my uh, structure models and I'll just grab this first one which is just a house and I'm going to drag it around to where I want it on my scene. So I'm going to put it right about here but now when you look, you know, it's floating. And we don't really want it to be floating. So we're going to have to play around with the, the height of our terrain right here. And I do want it down by this watering hole. So I'm going to rotate it a bit. And put it like that. I'll move it a bit. Uh, we'll put it right about there and drop it down. And then I'm going to go onto my terrain and I'm just going to adjust the height. So we'll take that, we'll set the height to not really sure. Let's do 120 to start with, the default. Okay, that's pretty good. I can live with that, but I don't 
want it to be so sharp carved out. So I'm going to bring the opacity up. I believe it's up. Uh, it might have been down. I always get it confused. Yeah. So there's not so sharp of an angle. And I'm just going to move my house onto that spot. All right, so move it this way. And of course, drop it down. It's still floating just a tad. And it looks like I'll have to flatten some more or just move it back. There we go. Now we'll be able to tell a little bit better later on once we get our character moving and we can just like run up to the house and see. But I just want to give a brief example on how to add uh, different assets to your scene. Now I'm going to go ahead with all my little houses and build up a, a little small town just around this lake. Nothing too major because it is a starter town. It's not a full service place. And I'll pause the video while I add them. Alright, so I've added a few houses here. Uh, if you don't know already, if you're hovering over a window and you hit the space bar, that window will go full screen. And then just hit the space bar again to get back to all the windows. So anyway, I just want to show that I've added a few houses. You know, I've got a nice little bridge here spanning across the water. But what I really wanted to show is in the hierarchy here, when you start adding all these houses and other structures to your game, it can get pretty cluttered. So what I generally like to do is just create an empty game object. And I'm just going to name it Starter Town. And I'm going to zero everything out on it. And I'll just take all the items that I have for my starter town. And I have a bridge right there. And I'm just going to drag it and drop it on there so it becomes the parent of all of them. So when I select starter town, you'll notice it's... If I select starter town, there we go. you notice it's pretty much in the center. It should be in the center of all your structures. And this also allows me to be able to move it around. I can create a prefab of it now. So maybe if I want the exact same town on a different scene, it just allows me to tweak things, like everything there, all at once. Now before I go ahead and start adding trees and grass and other things to make our scene look a little bit better, I wanted to start getting the character to be able to move. Uh, the main reason why I want to do this is just so I can actually start, well first off, work with the animation system a bit for his walk animation. And I also want to be able to walk around the town just to make sure everything's tweaked the way I want it to be for my first run because you know, I'm compulsive about constantly tweaking the way things look in game. Uh, OCD, I guess. But after we're done that, we'll come back. We'll start adding grass, uh, a little bit of detail to the land, some lighting. Actually, I'm going to add the lighting now since we're here. And I'm just going to add a directional light. Uh, I'm just going to move it to zero, zero, zero. And zoom in on it. And adjust the angle. So this is basically like your sun and where it's going to be shining from. So if we go back to my starter town. And we adjust the shadowing. Oh, that's another thing I wanted to point out. When I do this starter town... If I hit static, I can make all of their children static. Now things won't be able to move while they're static, but it'll come in handy later for creating light maps and uh, occlusion calling and whatnot, but we'll get into that as we come to it. But I do want to change my directional light. I have two of them now. I'm going to get rid of the first one. I want the new one that I just made. I'm going to change the color to kind of a pale yellow. And I'm going to leave the intensity. I'm not bothered going to play with any of this. Shadows, 
Kind of cast soft shadows. You can also pick hard shadows if you prefer that. But I'll do soft shadows. Uh, resolution I'm going to leave to quality settings. Uh, everything else we'll just leave the way it is for now. Just so we can get some shadow going on. So it's kind of like a sunset. And the yellow tint on everything. You might not want the yellow tint, but it's personal preference. And I'm sure I'll tweak it as I go along. And I want it to be directional. One more important thing to note is when you start fidgeting with the train, you know, like I was flattening things out, uh, depending on your train settings and your toolkit, uh, let me just go over there and quickly open that up. You might want to go over to textures and hit apply textures uh, because we changed some of the elevation and some of the slopes and whatnot. If you have your cliff settings to a certain angle, you might get some cliffs that form in. You might not want it to be updated. Uh, as a general rule, I try to keep it updated, but just keep that in mind. If you adjust the height or if you adjust your train, make sure to come back and apply your procedural textures again. So in the next tutorial, I want to be able to start moving our player around and I'm going to start him actually in town so we can actually get everything in our town lined up the way we want it to be. Anyway, I'll see you then. Bye-bye.